Ambassador Bunton, thank you very much uh, for talking to AirWire today. If I can start by uh, asking you the first question, did the statement yesterday by the State Department about Pakistan's latest political situation seems to be backing uh, Yusuf Zagilani. Was that the purpose? Um, the statement that we have made, I have made, and our government has made is, is two things, really, about the current situation. Uh, any constitutional changes in the government, such as the status of the prime minister, uh, this is an internal issue for Pakistan to resolve, and we uh, think that Pakistan will do it uh, you know, in the way, we hope they'll do it in the way that's consistent with constitutional practices. The second point is that we support, and we have said this many times, the strengthening of institutions in Pakistan, democratic institutions. We want to see a strong democracy in the country because we think a strong Pakistan, a democratic Pakistan, is um, a victory for the United States. So it's good for us both. Those are the two points I'd make. We know that Washington is trying to reset its relationship with Islamabad. But honestly speaking, it, it seems that what Washington is trying to do is to mend its relationship with the GHQ and the Pakistani army, uh, and not Islamabad per se. I think that's not correct. I think what we really want to do is have a broad relationship with all parts of uh, Pakistan's uh, authorities. When we've come out here, for example, Mark Grossman came out. He came out with a group that included experts who would talk about the ground lines of communications, the military issue, or about the coalition support funds. He included people who would come and talk about the uh, intelligence issues, how we can fight terror together. But he also was here to talk about uh, things, ways in which we can build our relationship more strong, uh, stronger in uh, investment and trade, uh, the ways that we can talk about how we work together in international groups, how we can make better progress uh, in the region, reconciliation with Afghanistan. Uh, support in any way we can for the re opening that we applaud for the, with uh, the op opening with India. So I think it's uh, a little narrow for you to say that. Rather, we want to build a relationship across the board. It's not easy. We took the first few steps. We have a long way to go because, as you know, 2011 was a tough year, and it showed a lot of problems in our relationship. It showed that we have to be honest, respectful, and really go at things across the board to make sure that in all areas we can improve the relationship. But there's no doubt that there are serious tensions between Washington and GHQ here. Uh, the talks which uh, Mr. Grossman had uh, recently, and you've been meeting Pakistani officials, how close Washington and Pakistani military establishment are in bridging that gap? The way to put this is we have a lot that we have in common with the leadership of Pakistan. That includes your military, that includes your civilians. One element that Mark Grossman was here to talk about was how can we work together to find a, uh, to, to support a strong uh, Afghanistan in the future that's a friend of a strong and democratic Pakistan. We had, in, uh, in, during his visit, the core group meeting, Afghanistan, Pakistan, the United States, getting together to talk about such issues as reconciliation and the process by which we, Pakistan and America, help our Afghan friends start an Afghan to Afghan dialogue on how they can have, uh, how they can end the war and come to a just settlement. So this to me is much more than just a question of military issues. Everyone in the region cares about Afghanistan. Everyone should work together to try to see how we can have uh, peace and prosperity in the neighborhood. Final point I'd make is when we talk about Afghanistan, we're not just talking about a country, we're talking about a region and the ultimate solution to problems in Afghanistan and that we want to work on with Pakistan in, involves all the countries of the region working together. That's the way we want to see it, and I think that's the way Mark approached it. And when everybody's trying to do such a good job, uh, will the drone attacks continue? I'm sorry? Will the drone attacks continue when everybody's trying to do such a good job? We are always going to uh, use any uh, way we can, just as our Pakistani friends are going to use any way they can, to fight the common enemy that we agree on, and we do agree on it, with your civilians and with your, and with your military leadership, that the, the, the terrorists who kill Pakistanis, who blow up mosques, who attack innocent people, are the same people who are attacking American soldiers and the soldiers of the Allies and your friends in Afghanistan. We will all work together as best we can to make sure that we fight this, uh, this threat. How we do it is something that we have, we, we have talked about during the visit. The counterterrorism discussions that took place during Mark Grossman's visit, we think were constructive and we'll continue with those. Do you think Pakistan has been too harsh in ask, asking for an apology on the Salala incident uh, and then the subsequent uh, stopping of the NATO supplies? I think that Pakistan is, is very uh, concerned 
that uh, it's understood that not only in the Salala incident, but even before that, Pakistan has paid an enormous price in its contribution to the war on terror. And we uh, want to make sure, I certainly want to make sure, my president, my secretary of state, that Pakistani people understand that we appreciate hugely the sacrifice you've made, the 3,000 soldiers who've died in the line of duty. Uh, I remember uh, visiting the monument in Karachi to the uh, policeman who had been killed in the terrorist attack. We know the price you've paid and we appreciate it. In the situation that came out of Salala, there have been any number of expressions, we think from the heart, from me, from Secretary of State, from Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff Dempsey, expressing our regret and our sorrow and especially focusing on our determination to work with you to make sure things like this never happen again. So at the substance here, dealing with the fact that we respect and honor the sacrifice you've made, and your soldiers especially, and that we think the best way to honor that is to express our sorrow in a human way and also to make sure this won't happen again, to make sure your soldiers talk to ours so that in our common fight, this kind of terrible accident and it was an accident, it wasn't anything done on purpose, that this will never happen again. I think we can make progress on that, and I believe that in the coming days, you'll hear of more cooperation across the border between ISAF and the Pakistani army so that we can honor the loss of those soldiers in the best way we can by ensuring that will never happen again. And why make Hafiz Saeed such a coveted character by uh, announcing millions on his head, and will uh, America use the proverbial or the so-called Bush doctrine to get their man dead or alive? Well, uh, I think there may have been a misunderstanding in Pakistan about what the announcement was. The announcement was something called Rewards for Justice, and it's a program we have around the world for those people who are suspected or who we have good reason to believe were involved in terrorist acts. We have good reason to believe that uh, this gentleman was uh, involved in the planning of the Mumbai attack in which uh, more than 100 people were killed, and we want to make sure that uh, we get the information that would lead to his arrest and conviction. That's what the Rewards for Justice was about. It wasn't a bounty in that sense. We're looking for the information that will get him convicted legally in a court of law. And we believe that that is something that, uh, we, we believe we, there, there's a reason to believe that he is uh, someone who was involved. And we want to see him behind bars if that's proven. There's a perception here in Pakistan that uh, Washington is pushing Pakistan uh, towards an uneasy and unwelcoming relationship with India. How would you respond to that criticism? Oh, I think that you should look to your leaders and what they say. I don't know a leader in your country, civilian or military, who hasn't uh, said out loud the importance of building a trusting relationship with India. And this is why America wants to see its two friends, Pakistan and India, get along. And we were encouraged by what, uh, for example, General Kiani said up at Siachen Glacier, that any step that's taken that will reduce the tensions between the two countries and allow them to reach the potential, say, in people-to-people -people contacts and in business and trade and in uh, education and all of those things that are so natural between the two countries. Anything that will lead to that, we want to support. We appreciate the fact that the process that's going on is careful, step-by-step, -step, and that it's Pakistanis and Indians leading, and I think the rest of the world, the friends of both countries, will follow. And then there is Iran. Uh, you must be aware that Pakistan is passing through the worst uh, you know, power shortage in its history, but you don't actually want Pakistan to buy gas from Iran. Why? The situation that we see in Pakistan is that you have an enormous energy problem, and it's our top assistance goal to work with energy with you. This was announced, uh, well, re-announced by Rajiv Shah, our aid administrator, when he came here. Now, what we do is twofold. When we look at the energy problem in your country, we see bringing new megawattage online, and the second thing is encouraging the kinds of reforms that will allow you to exploit the resources you already have. If you talk to any expert in the power field in your country, that expert, if he's honest, will tell you, you have plenty of power. Your power is mismanaged. Some power is stolen. Some questions like pricing structures are so distorted that you don't have the ability to bring in people who would exploit domestic reserves that would allow you to meet this shortage. So this is in large part a managerial issue, and in addition, it's an issue of bringing power online, and we do bring power online. We are refurbishing the turbines at Tarbella Dam, the dam that we built in the 1970s to help you with flood control and energy. We are committed uh, with others, the, other, the ADB, 
to uh, exploring the possibility of the Daimler-Basha Dam, which could be a real answer to many of these questions. So there are lots of ways of doing this, and we're committed to that. If Pakistan chooses to pursue the Iranian pipeline issue, that is up to them. But we just have to say they should, they should do something in a way that is uh, practical, that makes sense for the people of Pakistan, that's going to come online when it's needed. We think those other things that we're talking about are the best ways to move. And lastly, uh, there's a feeling again on Pakistani street that uh, maybe the United States is no longer the benign uh, friend. Maybe it is the enemy now. Uh, what can be done to, to repair that damage? Um, let me tell you what I see on the Pakistani street, OK? When I am on the Pakistani street, I see people who are anxious to be in touch with their friends in the United States, anxious to be back in touch with American culture, anxious to make sure that they have ties to the opportunities that mutual trade would bring. In other words, they have a desire to be in touch with what we would call the, the, the good side of America. That's very strong. And there's a lot of Americans who would like the same thing from Pakistan. So this question about the benign America or not, I think the Pakistani street understands that ultimately, America's Pakistan's friend. We have to work out a number of issues, and we want to do it honestly, openly, without fanfare, without overpromising these questions about terrorism, these questions about, about uh, the, uh, the war in Afghanistan. These are tough issues. But at the base, I would say to you, Pakistan is, in my opinion, one of America's, potentially one of America's best friends because of the people of Pakistan, who I think have an affinity for the people of America. And you can see it through culture, through exchanges, through um, through uh, shows like Sim Sim Hamara, which I just visited here in, in, in Lahore today, the kind of collaboration, which is for children, the kind of things that we really both believe in. I see that there is a good future for our country if we can be patient, solve some of the problems at the political level, help you as best we can economically, and show the respect two ways, both of us, back and forth, that will allow us to really unlock the potential of what I see as a great friendship. Mr. Martin, thank you very much. Thank you.